Hi, everyone. Deborah Hamilton. I'm so glad you're here. If it's the first Wednesday of the month, we are all here as the MEP community, and I'm so glad to see some familiar faces. Um, it's wonderful to have you here. It's an amazing day for me here. It's been beautiful and cold because I like cold. I know that Jan is saying you're crazy. Um, however, <laughs> I love gold. Anyway, this is Deborah Hamilton, Hamilton Law and Mediation, and of course, the wonderful MAP community. I want to thank Kieran for um, sending me a great colleague of his, Maya Rose, who does domestic violence. If we're talking about disasters, one of the disasters is how do you get out of a terrible situation if you have a pet? Uh, Maya Rose is someone who works on that in the UK. And so she and I are going to work together, possibly write some papers so that we can get the word out about how to make a plan for your pet when you're in the throes of a terrible situation. You know, disasters come in all forms. There is no one kind of disaster. Um, so before I uh, get into the spiel about disasters, which of course I'm I'm talking about this because I'm glad I'm seeing my friend, Connie, who's in the middle of a disaster, but good thing she's on a hill um, and there's no mud behind her because in California, some people who were on a hill had mud above them and that didn't work out for them very well. Um, so let me check in with Connie. How are you doing out there in the rain? Uh, well, we here are, are just fine, and you're right. Uh, we are on a very uh, solid rock part of the hill. However, right on the other side of me, on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, there have been landslides down by the ocean uh, facing Catalina Island, uh, 26 miles across the sea. It really is. And uh, uh, there have been, uh, even in December, when we had uh, bad rain, uh, there were 18 homes up in Rolling Hills Estates that uh, just suddenly slid down the hill right before Christmas. Oh, bliss, oh joy. So, uh, in fact, the uh, L.A. County was out there immediately, but the trouble is that they have to have uh, massive geologic um, site surveys and analyses and so on and so forth but the county cannot foot the whole bill. We're probably, we've been asking for state and FEMA aid uh, too. Uh, as far as the current storm, it literally blew in here Sunday after another bad storm last Thursday, which left us soaked. Uh, and we got about three inches of rain right here all in one fell swoop. The storm that started Sunday and blew out of here yesterday left 13 inches of rain in some parts of Metro Los Angeles. That's more than Angeles. like three or four months of rain for all of California. Well, um, we're supposed to right here in LA, our average annual rainfall in normal times, which don't happen because we either go from massive drought to massive flood. Um, our average annual rainfall in Metro LA is supposed to be about 15 inches. Well, we got 13 inches in some parts of this of the city. Uh, and the metropolitan area just between Sunday and Tuesday. My niece who lives uh, out in the North San Fernando Valley toward the foothills got 10 inches of rain. She said her whole area was flooded. She is a deputy LA city attorney. And on Friday afternoon ahead of the storm, ahead of Mayor Bass's first emergency um, press conference, which she's had every day, um, they were told uh, at a staff meeting, uh, everybody in City Hall was to telecommute Monday and Tuesday, if at all possible. Nobody was supposed to come into work. Uh, and it's a good thing. Um, and uh, we have had over 400 mudslides here. Yeah. And that's due to the fires, what, two years ago? Correct. Correct. In fact, I think that it's closer to 500. Actually, there had been over 400 down trees, including getting people on freeways. Yeah. So uh, there was one person up north and north of San Francisco uh, who uh, had was just driving down the 101 freeway and boom, a uh, big tree toppled on. Unfortunately, did not kill him. But there have been seven people killed by fallen trees. 
And that's why we talk about disasters because those guys didn't know that was going to happen to them and hopefully exactly. they were killed. However, it did delay them. That's one of the D's, remember? Um, so exactly. So sure you have a plan for your pets. Um, I well, I'd ready. like to talk later about the fantastic planning that Los Angeles City and Los Angeles County have I can't in wait. place. I can't including, wait. Because including shelters where you yeah. can take your pets. Because and because your large animals. I kept te texting Connie, don't wait too long. Don't wait too long. Because she's I know, I know you did. And I said, I know you're on top of the hill, but don't wait too long in case you have to get down from the top of the right. hill. Um, right. you know, I kept checking, so I can't wait. Let me check in with Kieran. Kieran, how old are you? Oh yeah, Debbie. Long time. Long time. <laughs> well, that's because am, it's middle I, of the night where you are. It is um Yes, 25 minutes to midnight. Yeah. And um, I would I would spend as long with talking about the weather here, but um, it's definitely five minutes to midnight. Yeah. Weather-wise, it's... Um, we, we had a few very bad storms and very frequent heavy winds. And it's got to the point now where... If we have a few couple of dry days or days without a storm, we, we're sort of wondering, you know, where's where, what's wrong and what are we missing? It's, yeah. it's the it, almost the opposite to the way the world was about five or ten years ago. Um, so as you're saying, the mudslides were a, a result of the fires two years ago. What a lot of the farmers around here are saying is that food prices are going to go through the roof later this year or next year because the land has very much been either um disrupted Probably. or destroyed you know that that it's to the point now you can't even get a tractor on a lot of the land it's just so waterlogged yeah so it's 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 waterlogged and what's grazed gets muddy and then nothing can grow and oh my god yeah so yeah. um the, the climate isn't changing. It's staying the same. I'm sure the farmers would tell us that. I'm being it's, facetious. I'm being facetious. Oh, I see. That, the, right. that the farmers would definitely not tell us there was a problem. Um, Jan, how are you? Hey, how's Tonka? Oh, we're both good. Thanks. Um, not nearly as exciting as it seems like other people right now. We did have, like, I want to say... Um, probably close to a month of either rain or snow um, and um, gray. So it wasn't very, it was a little depressing. Um, I do have to say, but otherwise we're both great. Thank you. Oh, good. Good. Just chilly and, and wet and freezing. Um, yeah. Stephanie, how are you and Yoda doing? We're doing well. Thanks. Great. Uh, yeah, the temperatures have been like above zero Celsius um, in Toronto, and the sun has been shining, but it's still pretty chilly. Yeah, we'll bundle up. And is he going out most of the time or staying in? Uh, usually he'll stay in most of the time. He's a fair weather pussycat. Yeah. Good. It has, yeah, it has to be nice. Yeah, it has to be nice. Marty, I don't know if you can talk and check in. We're just checking in with each other and seeing how our weather is doing. And then Connie's going to give us a little more of an update on California. Oh, we have great weather. It's going to be 54 this weekend. It's beautiful. So I have no complaints. And she's in Wisconsin, if anybody doesn't know. So that's really not to be sneezed at. <laughs> No, it's it's going to be a great weekend. I'm supposed to be working this weekend, so it's either going to be incredibly busy or dead, absolutely dead. Um, but there's no snowmobiling here in Wisconsin right now, so there's sadness in the snowmobile community. And the and the ice fishing, because my son went out to Wisconsin for a bachelor party up. They flew into um, Minnesota, so it was way up on the top of Wisconsin. They drove up to some right. lake, and they could not um fish because yeah. it was too warm and the ice was unsafe and then he sent me my son sent me a picture of some guy who drove his um pickup truck and his uh little motorhome onto the water um and uh, the motorhome yeah. didn't go in the water but the pickup truck did yeah it's it's bad we're supposed to have 
um, sturgeon spearing this weekend. It's an annual event and uh, it's a big deal on Lake Winnebago, but there will be no, there will be no spearing. Unless they come ashore, they come close to the shore, they will be speared. And I think they're probably smart sturgeon and will not um, be coming close to the shore. Um, so, Connie, give us a little bit more about what the town did or what the city did to make sure people, because it really is important that everyone try to get the information from your city or your town or your municipality on what to do with your pets if a disaster comes up. So you've got the floor, Connie, because I know that California is one of the leaders in figuring this stuff out. Well, for years, I have lived in the Metro Los Angeles area for 54 years. Um, and we have always joked about, we have four seasons, fire, floods, earthquakes, and mudslides. And that is still true, only being exacerbated by climate change. Uh, and of course, this is in addition, we kind of have literally the perfect storm here. We also have an El Nino year. And because of climate change, the ocean temperatures, which fuel the subtropical moisture that, that really produce El Nino, that uh, the El Nino current, which collides with uh, cold air moving in from Alaska along the Pacific coast, that is just a disaster literally waiting to happen. So Metro Los Angeles and the uh, consists of about eight counties from Santa Barbara um, on the on the northwest all the way down to the Mexican border, which is San Diego County, and on the east, Riverside County, which include all the, the desert cities. And so we have a gazillion microclimates here. Um, I am in Los Angeles County, although in a, in a separate incorporated area, I am not in the city itself. But LA City and LA County uh, coordinate beautifully, as do a lot of the other uh, uh, county governments uh, on their disaster coordination. And starting, as I said, we got a real, our first wham uh, of this storm uh, kind of cycle. Uh, last Thursday, where about three to three to four inches of rain were dropped uh, on on the entire area, and of course the ground became super saturated, setting up the preconditions for uh, the mess that that started on Sunday. Um, on Friday afternoon, Mayor Bass at five p.m. local time went on uh, an every local news station uh, news conference to talk about what the city was doing in terms of emergency preparedness and all the different websites, phone numbers, um, uh, 911 for real, no kidding, life-threatening emergencies, 311 if you, uh, you know, if you had flooding in your streets or you needed uh, the Department of Transportation to come out and take care of you and several other uh, phone numbers to, to call. Uh, and and it was just really terrific. And the uh, L.A. Uh, Fire Department chief, who was also a woman, um, got on and talked about what the fire department was going to do. Um, and in addition to in addition to going on all the news broadcasts and Mayor Bass has been giving at least once a day, if not twice a day, news conferences to update people as as uh, they they need the information. Um, all the local city governments, including mine here in Rancho Palos Verdes, have uh, emergency text links. They post on their on their city websites all kinds of emergency information and whom to contact and so on and so forth. And so it's really terrific. Uh, and everybody they, and I've been getting have, yeah. have they have they um spoken in these news conferences about people who have pets and what they need to do yes they have okay. and in fact uh one of the things that that mayor bass um mentioned at the outset was that if you have companion animals domestic animals you keep with you in your in your home dogs cats ferrets rabbits whatever whom you can uh whom you can keep in a crate and and take with you in the car uh then they are welcome in uh, LA city shelters. Uh, and we have lots of large animal shelters as well for horses and other livestock. Uh, in fact, one of the canyons that originally got, got flooded out, uh, I, I could have bet my life on it, on Sunday evening into Monday morning, 
was in the North San Fernando Valley, where I used to take one of my former Wheatons, who is now very much an angel. He left us in 2016. He was a fabulous sheepdog, wonderful herding dog. And so we used to go up there to train uh, with an AKC herding judge. She uh, had uh, upwards of 40 head of sheep, which were quote, dog broke, unquote. In other words, she kept them strictly for, for training herding dogs. And uh, in, a, in a fire, in, in the, uh, one of the horrible fires we had in 2009, she evacuated all of them to one of the LA City large animal shelters, which was near her. And so that was one of the shelters right in that area that was still listed, that if you have horses, sheep, cattle, whatever, you take them down there and, you know, you, you get them out as soon as you possibly can. And uh, people were under a, a mandatory evacuation measures um, so that, so that uh, they were being alerted uh, house by house and neighborhood by neighborhood. In fact, I got, I got a code red alert uh, as, as an awful lot of people did about this whole area, even though I was not under immediate evacuation, but just to notify me of a flash flood warning on uh, Sunday and Monday that uh, was in effect for all of Los Angeles County. So the, the notification system is absolutely terrific and the provisions for large and small animals is terrific. Now, last, um, uh, last year, as, as uh, Deborah notes well, in fact, this is how we met, I am uh, my national parent breed club's legislative liaison to the AKC, in addition to being my local uh, obedience club's uh, LL uh, to the AKC as well. And so I am up on all the canine legislation that's happening, uh, not only around the country, but in the state legislature up in Sacramento here. Last year, the state legislature in both houses passed unanimously a wonderful bill, Assembly Bill 781, um, that allowed for statewide uh, companion animals to be kept with their owners in emergency shelters and for emergency shelter provisions to be um, uh, to be made by the local municipalities for uh, livestock. And uh, it was sent to Governor Newsom's desk, but because we're running a $38 billion deficit, unfortunately, it was one of the bills that was cut. It is currently being reintroduced. Uh, it has been reintroduced as of last month uh, in, in, in the assembly. So we're looking for that to pass and, and hopefully the governor will sign it this year. No, I'm sure that most pet owners um, would be willing to, you know, pay a 50 cent more fee on their dog licenses to foot the bill for emergency um, issues. As you were talking, Connie, I was thinking of um, Marty in Wisconsin with 50 degree weather when it's not like that and the animals and what's happening to them in Wisconsin. And Karen said before Marty got on that in England, you know, the weather is really creating havoc for the ground there. Um, Kieran, have you spoken to any of the uh, farmers who have animals? Are the animals suffering because of um, the soft ground? Because I, I think it it may or may not affect them because they can't forage. He's got to use more hay, I would think. Um, so tell me what what you're seeing or what you're hearing. Yeah, it's um, the grass, to put it mildly, ain't what it used to be, and um, a lot of hay, a lot of grain. And um, another problem is we've had sort of a lot, a lot more frequent, very or sub-zero cold spells, which basically which means unusual for you guys. You usually are pretty temperate because you're on the water. Well, we yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. Meaning but, not freezing. Um, no, drops to freezing point, which basically means that sometimes the water has to be brought by hand to the animals. Yeah. You know, in other words, that the, 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 the normal water supply just freezes. Yeah, the, the hoses, you, had, you have no water in the hoses when it freezes. I've already lost one hose this year. Yeah. And I'm in North Carolina. It's it, in a way, the sort of echoes of COVID here where you have to rethink what used to be normal. And that's that's what we're going through. So yeah. And just just as Connie was saying, 
was describing what was happening with, with the legislature there and special measures, I sort of immediately got a sense of the um, enormous changes back in um, 1989 when the wall fell in Berlin, when, when the East Bloc opened up and it was, it just had this sudden flow of everything changing and changing quickly. So I, I, I hope it's not too disastrous for, for all of us in the next few years, but it just has that feeling about it now. Yeah, everything is in flux. Absolutely. The weather, yeah. the politics, the, you know, everything is is in flux. Mm -hmm. um, Marty, have you seen any differences in the in the animals um, due to the warm weather? Because they really I mean, you are going to have some more deep freezes, right? Hopefully uh, before the end, because Wisconsin usually stays cold till like February, right? She's probably transitioning out of her car. Um, or in a dead spot. Uh, but I was thinking that Wisconsin has cold weather. I know my friend usually doesn't come home until late February, early March. So there's a few more weeks in February. We're only on the 7th, although I'm wishing February away already. Um, and Jan so Marty, is is are the animals being affected at all by this, Marty? No, actually, they're, they're doing pretty well. We had a few days of super cold weather where it was below zero not with a wind chill so you know 10 below 20 below so those those are really tough times but you know they do fine we just have mud season a little bit more um it take yeah you you know you have to change how you water them and feed them but at least you don't have to worry about the water buckets freezing or the water pails freezing and some of the other you know ear, ears falling off because of frostbite you know um so it's 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 actually not bad Oh, good, good. Because I'm I'm thinking that Wisconsin's getting a little bit warmer. Um, North Carolina is getting a little bit colder. Um, doesn't make sense to me, but okay. Um, but it these these things we have to prepare for. And as both of you were, all of you were talking, I'm sitting there going, "What can we do?" Um, I think as pet owners and everyone who's listening, you really need to get down to the county office and say, "What do I do?" So in California, they make a a great effort of telling you what to do. Um, everywhere else. Uh, you can either maybe inquire in your vet, maybe they know because they might be on the cutting edge, but they might not know. I mean, they're busy as heck. They don't have time to figure out what's going on. Um, and I'm always one from my old PTA days that if you want something done, um, do it. So get down and say, what can I do to help you set up a plan for the care of the pets in our town? You know, where could we put them? What could we do? You know, nobody wants somebody to walk in and say, I want you to do this for me. California, of course, is ahead of the time. So they're already doing it. But most towns and cities, you know, they're trying to keep the people alive. The animals, not so much. But if you take some time to go down to your local town hall and say, what happens you know, if we have a flood, a fire, whatever, where would the animals go? Um, and if they say, are you kidding? We don't have, we, we haven't thought of that. Say to them, well, would you like me to try to put something together? And then just look at local towns. I mean, you could look at California if you wanted to, but look at somewhere that has created a plan um, and, and think what you have in the area that sort of mimics that, right? So um, there are different um, high school gyms, which may or may not accommodate crated animals. Uh, there are, you know, um, in Wisconsin, there's a ton of state fairgrounds, which may or may not in the wintertime have a lot of germs, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, but you could really create some avenue where things are just talked about because, you got to talk about it before you need it. You can't talk about it when you need it. Yes, Connie. Well, as I, as Deborah, you're you're absolutely spot on. And first of all, um, you know, not not trying to sound like a, a, a California chauvinist, but seriously, look at California at the state and the local, uh, state, county, and municipal levels for how you model disaster preparedness for animals. Well, because all well. their seasons are disasters. They all have, our they, seasons are disasters. They just I have said. disaster upon disaster. So it's sort of you like betcha. goes with the program. You betcha. The second thing is, as I mentioned, there is LA City, but then there's LA County. And we are a whole bunch of different municipalities. 
big, like Long Beach, just, just down the road from me, which is the second largest city to LA City in the county. But then there are small ones like mine, Rancho Palos Verdes. We have five small municipalities here on the peninsula, which, oh, by the way, used to be part of the Channel Islands 67 years, a million years ago. So what you do is you take yourself up to uh, City Hall and find out if there is a disaster preparedness commission or committee. And as Deborah said, if there is, you sign up and you volunteer. say, hey, volunteer. And it's all volunteer. Uh, <laughs> I've been an LA County commissioner before. Um, what you do is you sign up and you go to their meetings and you say, I can give you, uh, you know, my viewpoint as an animal lover, an animal owner, and here's what we need. You go to city council meetings and you testify. There is always, always time for public comment at every single city council meeting. Democratic form of government, right? Let the people speak. The same for your county board of supervisors meetings. Go testify. Go uh, comment during during the, the public comment uh, period in every single meeting, whether they're on Zoom, whether they're in person down at your at your county uh, board of administration. So there are all kinds of uh, ways that you can make your voice heard. Write to your city council member, write to your state assembly member, write to your state senator, call, text, email, whatever. And uh, it is, I'm, I'm an old political operative, as, as Deborah knows, on uh, several different levels. Um, and uh, there, is, there is an old maxim in U.S. politics, again, from the federal all the way down to the municipal level, that one constituent communication is worth 10,000 votes. Remember that. Make your voice heard. And for I your animals. Yeah, for your animals. And... And what I would like to share is some of the things that I've taught people to do, especially recently with a lot of my clients who burn bridges and then come to me to try to rebuild them, which sometimes work and sometimes doesn't because they react in the moment and they repent in leisure, as my mother would say. Old Irish saying I hear, Colin, but uh, Karen, but um, it, what you need to do is you need to go down. And as I said, this is from my old PTA days when someone would come to me and tell me I had to start a program for her child because her child was the smartest kid in the class and we needed this program. And I go, great, could you do the legwork for me? Bring it to me, bring me all the information. And that's what they're going to say to you. If you walk in and say, I'd like to help do A, B, and C, expect them to say, what can you do to educate me? And what you need to do is you need to educate them in a way where you're open for conversation. Not that if they don't want to use wire crates or they don't want to use airline crates or they don't want to let ferrets in or something like that, that you just absorb the information, be an active listener, make notes, and then create either um, a study that shows them that their fear of ferrets is unfounded. I'm only using ferrets as an example. Um, or their fear of you know, the pit bull type dogs uh, is unfounded or it is founded, right? And um, what can we do to keep them in a certain area so that they're safe and people are safe? You know, there are so many things that we know as pet owners that when we get defensive and reactive, we forget that working together always makes life better for the pets. I just had someone write me about um, a couple that broke up and this new law in New York which enables people to allow the judge to decide the best interests of the pet, which they haven't figured out. And I'm probably going to alienate a lot of my judge friends, the best interests of children. And now you're asking them to make the best interests of the pet, their decision. So I'm like, okay. Uh, you know, this couple was sharing a pet for two years. And then one of the people decided they were did not share anymore. And, and she, she said, so I think that this will work under this argument. And I think that my client who has the dog now and decided not to share the dog anymore will win. And I said, did you ask the dog? I said, unfortunately, your pet doesn't hate your ex. And so how can we work together instead of me being right and you being wrong? We work together to find a way to move forward. Maybe it won't be a week on, a week off, because I never want to see my ex again. I get that. But 
you go on vacation one weekend a month, you're off, you go with your girlfriends, your boyfriends, whatever, you know, it, it just can be created if you actively listen to what they're saying. So in the disaster mode in Connecticut or in Toronto or Wisconsin or in England, here in North Carolina, um, we all just need to take a little time to think about what we need for our pets and then make it happen for everybody's pet. Because you guys are the educated ones. You're the ones who've taken the time to make a plan for your pet, to put the sign up on your refrigerator, to make sure people know what's going to happen at Tonka and Yoda and the little Swiss Swiss dogs. I forgot one of the names, but the the so so Marty has corgis and she has something Swiss farm dogs. Dutch Swiss. Danish Swedish. Danish. Well, I had the right D. Yes, Danish Swiss. Wrong, yeah, yeah, the wrong area, but the right letter starting it. The Danish Swiss farm dogs, and we've got Wheatons and Karen. Are you with a dog now, or you're without a dog? Three at the moment. There you go. Karen has dogs too. Uh, so right now, are you babysitting, or did you acquire? Are you the great babysitter? Oh, it's it's a mixture of things. <laughs> It's a tricky one to explain, but um, partly babysitting, partly babysitting. But um, I, when, when you talk about um, strange bedfellows, I, I'm going to mention the three very quickly. So one is a Malamute, which is sort of like the Huskies. Right. And he's absolutely delighted when the place freezes. It's like Siberia visiting him. Then we've got a, a Bernese mountain dog, which they is like very cool, cool, very delightful. But the best of all is a corgi, which is also a um, sheepdog mix. And it believes it can round up horses. So it's it's quite a sight to see. Well, Marty breeds corgis, so she will tell you that they probably do have a very big personality and decide they can do almost anything when it comes to herding. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I'm I'm so glad all of you are here tonight. It's really important. Disaster is something we all have to take a part in preparing for. And not just us. I mean, of course, us. We need our, like Connie always has her crates in her go bag because, you know, she lives in the flame mm. fire. Yeah, I mean, the flame flood, uh, earthquake, and what's the other? Mudslide. Mudslide. Um seasons uh, so she's ready to go uh the rest of us don't have so much of an issue but we definitely have to make a plan um and in doing so try to branch out a little bit i'm in 2024 i'm really trying to help all of you not only educate yourselves on what it is you need to do for your pets but once you do take it downtown take it to your neighbor when you when you talk to your neighbor about taking care of your pet I'll never forget when the gentleman out in um, La Jolla said, but I don't want to take care of his pet, but I want him to take care of my pet. I said, okay, well, that might work. Might not. Um, make sure you quid pro quo, because if you, you know, like, like Karen, you know, people call Karen and say, can you watch my dog while I'm away? And, and he says, yes. And I'm sure he has all the contact information he needs and all the, you know, reports he needs because he and I wrote that book together. So I'm hoping he does um, because the animals are away. I have a, a colleague here who went to France for two years and left her horse in the barn. And her um, statement was, they know how to take care of him. And I said, do you want to write all that down? She goes, no, they know how to take care of him. I said, mm -hmm. what happens if something happens? Oh, they know what to do. And Marty is a veterinarian and an attorney. So she's probably shaking her head right now when someone says they know what to do. That never works. I have two cases right now where people, you know, gave one of their dogs to a family um, on trial to see if it would work out. No paperwork. Um, and they kept it and they bred it. And now they're having a hemorrhage. And I'm sitting there going, OK, I get it. But did you have anything in writing that said they couldn't breed it? Well, we talked about it. I I get it. Um, I talk about a lot of stuff, but now I actually am very kind and calm and sit down and write this really nice touchstone contract that tells you this is what we're doing together. This is what we both believe. This is what we both know. And both of us are going to abide by this. Less adversarial. 
but really clear and to the point of what it is. So when you're planning for disaster, that's what you want to do with your town as well. Very collaborative, very um, able to make sure um, that you ask really um, and curious questions and then listen to their answers. And if they brush you off at first, please don't get disappointed. They have a lot of things on their mind. They're trying to juggle a lot of balls. Just say, well, what one thing could I do? Could I find a place where pets could go? Could I see if I could collect a bunch of, you know, crates or what would be helpful to you? And you know, know what? That. Most of them will come back to you and I, say, well, why don't you do this? Disasters happen. We have to be prepared. Our pets are expecting us to be prepared. Um, and until we, you know, take the bull by the horns, for ourselves in our own little home and then outside our home, because as we heard from Connie, you know, thankfully the municipality and the counties have worked together to create um, places where these animals can go when they're in danger. Don't wait for the county to do it, you know, do it um, with them, do it for them. Um, there's, there's nothing that says you can't be proactive. So as we wrap up tonight, um, what's your takeaway, Stephanie? Sorry, it's at the very top here. It's good it to right know there. what's going on, like coast to coast, <laughs> for a heads up on what could be going on uh, over where I'm at. Yeah. And so um, having all the bases covered and um, making sure that like we have everything we might need in case something happens and uh, knowing the different protocols helps a lot. Yeah, and, and just ask mm -hmm. your municipality in Toronto, what are you doing? What can I help you do? Because the cats are depending on you. Mr. Yoda's depending on you, God forbid, and so are all his friends. Yes. Perfect. Jan, We've we you've been quiet, but I know you've been listening. I've been watching. Yeah, no, I have been. Um, yeah, I just I think that I'm going to head to the town and find out because I really don't know what is in place in my town at all. Um, yeah, I know that there are some interesting um, ways of thinking in Connecticut <laughs> um, in regard to, um, you know, pet, you know, just pet care and other things. So it is worth um, investigating. Right. Just be an educated consumer and be an educated educator of the legislature because you can't blame them for not doing something that they might not have had any clue they needed to do. Um, Kieran, what are you going to do with your three guys and the rest? Are you going to go down to the town and see what you can muster up or there's no plan in your in your future? No plan in your town. We plan to remain calm no matter what happens. Keep calm and carry on. I think that's a shirt. Exactly. It's a shirt. <laughs> yes. However, you should because you know you never know, and and you're a you're a um, transient pet owner, and really it is important for you to know what to do. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Um, I don't know if Marty can speak up. If not, Connie. Last but not least, um, just just one more thing. When you go advocate and or offer your services as a volunteer to your your local government. Uh, entity. Uh, if you can at all possible, take people with you, like if you belong to a dog club or a, an obedience club, uh, take folks with you. In fact, our obedience club participated um, in putting on a, a, an animal disaster preparedness um, whole afternoon, uh, a trial run uh, for the city of Torrance at Torrance Municipal Airport, just down here. In fact, my airplane used to be based there um, so years ago so that we could work with the city entities, the fire department, the police department, the animal control, to show them how dogs and cats and other animals uh, could be gathered and, you know, could be sheltered. And we sheltered them in a lot of the airport facilities. And it was great because it was a big open space and it was way far away from anything that was going to flood or catch on fire. And so we decided that that was an excellent place 
for uh, an emergency uh, an emergency venue uh, for people to go with with their pets. And it was a really great trial run. But our obedience club was, we were the lab rats really. And we were the yeah. volunteers who were helping make this all, all happen. So if you can enlist your friends who are involved in animal clubs, animal communities, and just go on down on mass and, and say, hey, we're here to help. Right. And, and then listen, um, and, and go listen one or two, because if seven of you walk in, they go, oh my God. And they, and right. they immediately think you're just pains in the butt. So right. go one or two and then say, listen, we have a, a whole cadre of people who can come and help you and set this up. And we're not expecting you to do all of this. We're happy to, you know, help you put together the protocols. Cause we live the life, you know, we're moving shit every weekend to a dog show. So we, we you know about you. that. So I uh, have I have all kinds of crate dollies that I can use to move animals. I know, I know. It's it's ridiculous. I have so many crates in storage. It's ridiculous. I'm still trying to get rid of my um my beautiful stainless steel kennels that I can't get rid of because, well, first of all, they're very heavy. And second of all, um, I don't want to give them away because they're really, really good. So um on that note, everyone. Have a lovely evening. This is Deborah Hamilton. This is the MAP Community Call, and we'll be here on the third Wednesday of the month, which is the 21st. Happy Valentine's, everyone. Give kisses to your babies. And until next time, take good care.